and welcome to the Oshkosh Connection right here on GovTV. An opportunity for Oshkosh to hear from their uh, district's state lawmakers about their background, some of the projects that they're working on, and their goals for the upcoming weeks and months ahead. We look forward to connecting our city of Oshkosh here with what's happening on the state level, and then as always, tying it back to what how it affects us here in Oshkosh. Uh, so I'm your host, Emily Springstrow, and today we welcome Representative Gordon Hintz to the Oshkosh Media Studio here to chat with us about what he's been working on um, and how it affects Oshkosh here. So uh, with that, I'd like to welcome Representative Gordon Hintz. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, happy to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, it's, it's always exciting to have everybody in here to kind of tell us a little bit about uh, the background of what they do, how everything works. And prior to taping, you were giving us a, a nice little um, refresher on how the timetables of everything works, especially with newly elected officials. So maybe take us through that. Again. Yeah, well, it's a great time to meet and start off. The entire session is in front of us. Mm -hmm. So legislators were, so, we were sworn in last month, the new governor was sworn in um, and you know the legislative session goes into next spring overall so everything that we have an opportunity to do um, is before us the big thing that happens now is the state budget the governor is going to introduce that on February 28th and then that will be debated uh, who knows how long we have divided government but um, that's the big thing to people to pay attention to school funding roads prisons universities um, badger care so you know uh, the big stuff that usually has an impact on people's lives uh, and Oshkosh. Definitely, and it's been going pretty well so far, even though we're you know very shortly into it right now. Um, would you say it's been a positive uh, experience? Well, uh, the beginning is so to, you always hit reset. Um, obviously, there was some frustration over what took place in December when they kind of changed some of the powers, and I think that um, will have a negative impact for some time to come. But Governor Evers, I think, has struck the right tone and. Um, you know, everybody wants to try to find a way to work together. I mean, the problems don't go away if you can't deal with them. Right, definitely. And you're in a somewhat new position, Gordon. Um, it, you know, in your position, I guess, kind of describe what you're doing now um, sure. and how it's different than, than last year. Yeah, so in the middle of last session, um, I became uh, the Assembly Democratic Leader. Uh, so just like the minority leader in Washington, D.C., or um, if we were in the majority, I guess I would be Speaker. Um, I sort of uh, herd cats, um, organize the uh, Democrats, work with the Speaker's office, uh, try to advocate, try to, you know, steer us through the legislative process. Um, it doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm, I still have my job as a legislator, but I'm on fewer committees. Um, you know, and I certainly have a bigger role to play, especially now working with the governor. So um, it's exciting, but, um, you know, I'm always, I always look forward to getting back to Oshkosh. Definitely. Well, we're always ha happy to have you back in Oshkosh, too, of course. Um, but so you're saying that you're a little bit less involved in, in writing le legislation and more kind of in, um, you know, the supervision part of your role. Well, I've got all my constituents uh, here, but I also have to serve the uh, 35 members of the state assembly in my caucus. And mm -hmm. so um, my staff has to help their staff, help them. Um, you know, I, I still have legislation that I work on. I still take all my meetings in Oshkosh, but it, it's just a different role. Um, and, you know, but I think it can benefit Oshkosh. Sure. Any priorities as you're looking ahead in this new role? Well, in the state budget, um, you know, I obviously I'm looking forward to what Governor Evers puts out. We want to see support for K-12 education. Um, we'd like to see more support for the UW system. Um, we're hoping to get CLO, the second phase of the CLO faculty uh, nursing building done. Uh, that got stopped a few years ago. Um, we're going to push for that. Um, working with the city on trying to get some funding for the river walk through the stewardship program um, and some other priorities and um, you know there's individual things for instance with all the snow days we have uh, we're required to have a curtain number of instructional hours uh, but if we keep getting snow days we'll be going to school till July <laughs> um, there's some talk about legislation that might be able to you know give a waiver for that hourly requirement so we don't have to continue to add school days to make up for these Wow, a lot of really great ways to tie it right back here to Oshkosh Absolutely. Gordon, which is what this program's all about. Um, uh, prior to, the, pr to hit and record here, we were talking a little bit about Dark Store. Um, any update um, on your end that you can Yeah, and I, I should have mentioned it because last week uh, Governor Evers announced he was going to include the fix uh, to the Dark Store problem that we've seen. Again, this is where um, you know big box national retailers have been using vacant buildings to uh, make their assessment values, you know, based on. So uh, what that has meant is the tax burden has shifted to residential and small business property owners to make up for the difference in these lower assessments for um, buildings and businesses that 
use our services, if not more than normal people. Um, and it's, it's really been a problem and continues to be a problem. So we've got bipartisan support. Governor Evers is putting it in the budget and not acting is making a decision. And that's not on the side of, of property taxpayers. So hopefully we'll get it fixed. Excellent. Um, wonderful update on that, too. You mentioned the budget and the new governor. Um, kind of walk us through how that's going to look over the next couple of years, what that process looks like for some of us who could use a refresher. Well, um, you know, we're talking about a two-year budget. So this, we're debating the, you know, 2019-2021 budget. It goes from July 1st of this year till June 30th of 2021. And again, you know, highways, prisons, universities, Badger Care, um, K-12 education, that's about 80% of the budget aid to cities. So a lot of the things that, um, you know, fund our city services from state aid to the ability for them to be able to have fees and um, what their limits are on the levy, that's, those, those are the big items. Um, we've got divided government, you know, Republican controlled legislature, a new Democratic governor. Um, there will need to be compromise if we're going to address these things, especially in areas of transportation funding. That's been one where We've seen our roads and infrastructure decline. We've seen borrowing over the last eight years double as a percentage of revenue paying off debt, and we're seeing delays in a lot of major projects. And so we've been lucky here because 41 got done years ago, but there are other parts of the state, and I know on a lot of our county roads and other projects where um, if we don't act, you know, we're really making the problem worse. Uh, none of the solutions are popular, but um, those are, uh, you know, transportation's one area to watch that's gonna need a bipartisan solution. Definitely. So a lot of um, priorities moving forward with the budget um, and things that we can kind of keep an eye out for as the process moves forward. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, and you are Oshkosh's representative. You're, this is your district. Um, so I always try to end out the program or the segment with um, what are your main priorities to kind of keep Oshkosh moving along and uh, keeping Oshkosh a priority in the decisions that you're making? Yeah. So, level? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in touch regularly with the city, the county, the school district, the university, the technical college, since those are sort of big entities and state decisions impact their funding, impact their ability to do things. And most people that get elected to the council or the school board will express their frustration because they get there and they realize the state dictates or you know uh, makes their job harder or uh, it moves slower than they need to to give them the flexibility. I would like to see us restore some power and local control to give them the resources to be able to invest in quality of life, uh, to in invest in our services, um, and to work on economic development. Um, I, I can't, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, I also represent the men and women who work at the prison and at Winnebago Mental Health and uh, the work conditions there right now are, um, you know, they're unsustainable. You're asking, people are working record levels of forced overtime. It's not safe, um, it's not healthy, and it's only gonna get worse. And so one of my challenges is try to find a way uh, to improve the pay, benefits, and work conditions for the men and women that we ask to, uh, you know, do a pretty difficult job. Wonderful. Definitely great priorities that you've got here for the people in Oshkosh. Um, to wrap up the Oshkosh Capital Connection, of course, the theme of this program is connecting you with the people of Oshkosh. So uh, if people are interested in reaching out to you, contacting you, talking, um, how do we reach you? Sure. Um, well, phone, email, through my website. Um, I try to have regular office hours at the Oshkosh Senior Center. Mm -hmm. um, you can look for that announcement. It is open to anybody. Um, but if you call me, I will call you back. Uh, if you email me, I will email you back. Um, I've got a, uh, a free toll-free number. I've got a, my home number is 920-232-0805. Um, and there are no dumb questions. I can't do my job if people aren't engaged in letting me know um, what their concerns are. They're, I've written bills based on people's feedback to me about what they're experiencing. And so that's how it's supposed to work. I'm your representative and uh, I need your feedback. That's wonderful. Well, we thank you for being readily available to everybody here in Oshkosh and we appreciate the transparency that you've got going on. Thanks so, for having me. Um, so yeah, thanks again for joining us, Representative Hintz, and we look forward to having you in next quarter. Great, thanks. <laughs> and thank you again to our viewers for taking the time to get plugged into the Oshkosh Capital Connection. Uh, make sure you view uh, this program on Oshkosh Media's Facebook page, on YouTube, and you can watch and share Oshkosh Capital Connection as well as other government updates updates and community videos. You can also watch us on Spectrum Cable Channel 10, ATTUverse Channel 99, Apple TV, Roku, or live on our website at oshkoshmedia.org. And then finally, make sure you check us out on the radio at 101.9 Oshkosh FM. So once again, thank you for joining us for your Oshkosh Capital Connection, and we'll see you next time.